I recently got back from an international vacation and when I saw the long stretch of clear nights in the forecast after I got home, I couldn't pass it up. And I'll be using this opportunity to photograph a new nebula target. I got a head start on some new data a few nights ago and tonight I'll be grabbing some additional data to add to the project. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I continue to take my first light on the Helix Nebula. My name is Kwesi Aqua and welcome to the Astro Park. New General Catalog 7293, or the Helix Nebula, is a planetary nebula located in the constellation of Aquarius at a distance of 650 light years away from Earth. Discovered by Carl Ludwig Harding in 1824, it was the first planetary nebula known to have cometary knots, also called globules. Most of these globules are larger than our solar system and have masses comparable to Earth. The nebula is believed to have formed about 10,600 years ago and has a diameter of 5.74 light years. With a magnitude of 7.6, the Helix Nebula is one of the brightest planetary nebulae in the night sky and can be seen with binoculars and small telescopes with good sky conditions. And with its striking appearance as an eye in space, the Helix Nebula is also known as the Eye of God. So for this session, I'll be using my big boy triplet apochromatic refractor telescope, the Orion Eon 130 ED. And for imaging, I'll be using my trusty one-shot color CMOS camera, the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. And as usual, this will be mounted on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG. And to pull out specific wavelengths of light from the nebula, I'll be using the Optolong L Ultimate Multi Band Pass Narrow Band Filter. So, Without further ado, let's head outside, take a walk in the park, and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the Helix Nebula. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've completed my setup procedures for my equipment and my imaging session for the Helix Nebula is now in progress. So in this single three minute exposure, you can cleanly see the structure of the nebula in the center of the frame. And one of the cool things I like to analyze with planetary nebulae is 
when we look at the nebula, we're actually seeing the aftermath of a supernova explosion. And the structure of the nebula is the material that was expunged from the star during the explosion. And this material is composed mainly of hydrogen, oxygen, and other trace elements. And a key feature for planetary nebulae is the white dwarf star in the center. And that dwarf star is the leftovers from the supernova. And this star, as I mentioned, is a key feature in all planetary nebulae, such as Messier 57, the ring nebula in the constellation of Lyra, as well as Messier 27, the dumbbell nebula in Volpecula. So a cool challenge you can try for yourself, if you have a telescope that has a large enough aperture, try to see if you can resolve that white dwarf star in the center of the nebula. And that's something I'm going to try for myself, given that I have enough exposure time for my post-processing. But apart from that, everything seems to be going pretty smoothly so far tonight. There were a few wispy clouds here and there, and I'm just keeping an eye on that just to make sure that it doesn't interfere with any of my work. But everything is going very smoothly, and it feels really good to be back in the park again after a long vacation. So as per usual, I'll continue to monitor the session, try to collect as many exposures as I can, and we'll just see how the night progresses. Okay, so here's a quick update for all of you. It's a little after 11.30 and I pointed the telescope to Altair in the Summer Triangle to do a quick focus check. Then I came back to the Helix Nebula to continue the imaging session. So as I mentioned earlier, I was overseas on vacation earlier this month. A few of my friends and I were able to have the opportunity to visit the land of the rising sun, the beautiful country of Japan. During our stay, we had the opportunity to visit some sites in Tokyo, Kyoto, Nara, and Osaka. It was a fantastic experience and I'm already looking forward to my next visit. Also in Japan, I had the honor and privilege to finally meet Paul, aka the JP Astro Guy. Paul gave my friends and I a tour of the Hakone region that had some breathtaking nature sights. Paul is an astrophotographer with the Astrophotography Japan YouTube channel, and he does some incredible work. I've placed a link to his channel in the description box down below, so definitely be sure to check him out. It's quite remarkable to see how having a passion for a hobby can bring people together, even if those people are on opposite sides of the world. So in terms of astrophotography, if you have the opportunity to travel, I would highly encourage you to take the trip because not only will you be able to see deep space targets that aren't available in your area, you'll also create memories that will last a lifetime. So for me personally, one of my goals is to try and travel to a proper dark site. 
As much as I love taking images here in the Astro Park, I can only do so much from my Bortle 7 light polluted skies. So by going to a dark site, I'll have the opportunity to see hundreds, if not thousands of stars that I can't see from the park, as well as take broadband images of deep space objects in their truest color possible with no filter. So far I've traveled to take a image of a total solar eclipse, but the next item on my list is to visit a proper dark site. And the closest one to me is the Cherry Springs National Park up in Pennsylvania. So I hope one day to make the trek up there later on in the future. So have you ever traveled to do astrophotography? Let me know about it in the comment section down below. And wherever your travels may take you, I hope you have an amazing experience. Hey everyone, so unfortunately my target dove behind some trees, so I have to wrap things up a little bit early tonight. I was able to capture almost two hours of data, about an hour and 50 minutes or so. And putting that together with what I did last Friday, I should have an adequate data set to create a decent image. Although I didn't get the integration time that I was hoping, I'm still grateful to have been given the opportunity to take another first light on a new subject. And I look forward to the improvements I'll be able to make later on in the future. And I just completed my calibration frames, so I'm gonna pack everything up head back home and get some well-deserved sleep to start a new day tomorrow, as well as recover from my jet lag. So as always, thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy my processed image of the Helix Nebula at the end of this video. And until next time, take care and I wish you all clear skies. <laughs>